On my last cruise, I conquered the fear of heights by plunging down a 10-story slide. I challenged my fear of speed, racing around a three-story go-kart track in the middle of the ocean, and some of the things that I did were both very high and very fast. I'm not sure which fear I was conquering here, but I'm glad that I gave it a go. As soon as I embarked the Norwegian Prima, I noticed these slides on the side. It is kind of hard to miss those. They twist around each other and they go down 10 decks off the side of the ship. That's almost 95 foot or 29 meters on top of however high up deck eight is from sea level. That is seriously high. I waited until our ship had reached Bermuda to try the slides and I was very relieved to see that they were the type where you go down in a little bag. I haven't been on a slide for years, but I remember as a kid that the ones with the bags were always more comfortable. Pulling myself into the slide and into this just wall of darkness was scary, but the bit at the top was definitely the fastest. It's impossible to work out where you are when you're inside the slide, so I just laid back, looked at the ceiling and enjoyed it. It was quite peaceful actually. The idea is that because there's two of these slides you would race somebody to the bottom, but as I did this by myself, I'm gonna say that I won that race. By default. This slide had given me so much confidence, but I knew that this was absolutely the easiest slide on the ship, which is why I decided to start here. Also on my slide to-do list was a drop slide where the floor literally falls out below you, and a huge water slide called the wave where you slide up and around this part that's kind of like a half pipe. Right beside the entrance to the rush slide that I just completed was this entrance to the go-kart track. At this point, I really wasn't too nervous. I thought to myself, honestly, how scary can go-karts be when they're on a cruise ship? I kind of imagined that they would be like bumper cars going around and around in circles. And spoiler alert, they were nothing like that. I wandered up to the viewing platform and I realized just how big this racetrack was. It's split over three decks and it is definitely not for the faint-hearted. It's actually the biggest racetrack at sea and from sea level it's 166 foot up. That is terrifying but so cool. On the actual track there were hairpin bends, there were hills, there were corners, there was everything. I sat in the little demonstration car and I watched the other guests racing around me. It looked like a lot of fun so I decided that I would give it a go. I was worried that I would be holding everybody else up with how slow I was but I had heard that the speeds were limited when you did a group race like this so that was at least reassuring. I was hoping that if I was going slow I could just blame it on the go-karts but that was not what happened. When we arrived for our go-kart time slot we watched a safety video and we were weighed to make sure that we were under the maximum weight of 265 pounds. The video showed us how the go-karts worked which was actually pretty easy. It's just one pedal for go and one pedal for stop. They also told us what the different flags would mean and told us that we shouldn't bump into each other because this was go-karts, this was not bumper cars. When I was sat in the car I was given a helmet and we were strapped in. It wasn't long after that that we were let loose one by one on the track. It wasn't really a race because you don't all start at the same time, but the speeds of your laps are tracked so that you can tell who is the fastest. I had already seen quite a lot of the track from land and also the viewing platforms, but I really had no idea which way the track would turn next. I couldn't get my head around that. I don't remember exactly how many laps we had, I think it was around eight, but I was having way too much fun to be counting and I knew that they would wave a flag when it was our last go, so I didn't really have to think about that. It was so much better than I could have imagined and because we were so close to the ground, to me it felt really really fast. After a couple of laps I felt as though I had got used to the track, kind of. I actually enjoyed it so much that I went back later in the cruise and I did what is called you and the track. This is where you race around the track with nobody else there and you try and get the best time possible. A regular go on the go-karts with everybody else cost $15 and this experience of doing it alone was only an extra $5 coming in at $20. I definitely had $20 worth of fun so I don't think that's too bad. Amazingly I didn't come last but I did come a solid 18th out of 19th and yes I did edit this video to say 18. It actually says 1 but I didn't get 1, I got 18. Our cruise was sailing to Bermuda and we were so lucky with the weather. We sailed in April and the temperatures reached 77 Fahrenheit, which for me being from the UK, that is a glorious, glorious summer's day. We decided to head out to the pool and it was here that I noticed this massive water slide just off to the side. Heading up a deck, I had a great view of the other guests giving it a go and I realised now just how high up this was. I also noticed the see-through bit of the tube and I could see other people going through on rubber rings which did look like fun. It looked like they were going very fast though. Actually getting into the ring at the top of the slide was probably the most tricky part but as soon as I got sat down the lady who was operating the slide gave me a push, a gentle nudge. 
I just hoped that I wouldn't go backwards at any point because I saw quite a few people going backwards and I was just about ready to go forwards, let alone backwards. But thankfully, I stayed the right way around the entire time. And the first time that I really noticed the speed of the slide was when I hit this water at the end. It was so much fun and I could have done it again, but I knew that I still had the scariest slide to come. After all that excitement, I decided to try something inside the ship. Norwegian Prima has a huge area on board called the Galaxy Pavilion, and it's honestly like walking into another world when you walk in there. Walking around the room, I knew that I had to give something a try. There were lots of games to choose from, and you pay for each on your cruise card. You can either just play for the games as you play them, or you can buy a pass that lets you have unlimited goes. It's basically like the modern version of an arcade, and when I used to cruise with Norwegian as a teenager, I spent a lot of time and a lot of money playing Pac-Man in the arcade, but this is a massive step up from Pac-Man. I've always avoided VR in the past because I do get travel sick and I thought that it may make me feel unwell, but I thought this is the perfect time to give it a try. I can always take it off if I don't like it. I spotted this roller coaster simulator that to me looked like so much fun. The ladies who were on it before me were screaming away, which for some reason made me want to do it more, not really sure why. I figured it couldn't be that scary as it wasn't real and I knew that it wasn't real. The ladies in the front row decided to stay on and to ride another roller coaster, which I thought was a good sign. I could hear them making noises when I was inside the VR headset, which for some reason made it feel even more realistic. The game that I was playing was a snowy roller coaster scene, and it really did make me feel like I was on a roller coaster. I will say that the roller coaster that I was riding did not stick to any sorts of laws of science or physics. It would be going up and we would go straight through the clouds, all of a sudden the track would disappear, we would come plunging to the ground, and it would really vibrate and shake you around when our roller coaster hit the floor. As much as you tell yourself that it isn't real, there's definitely some part of your brain that thinks that it is. That's the whole point of it. And I actually went on another game after this that was much less scary. By now, I knew that it was time for me to give the scariest slide of all a go. Throughout the cruise, I'd heard other people dropping on this slide and usually screaming. I had no idea what my reaction would be when the floor dropped, and I hoped that I would stay in the right position and that I would drop all the way down. I wasn't sure how the slide would slow me enough down before I got to the bottom, and I really, really, really didn't want to get stuck in this see-through bit in the middle. If you are going to do something like this, make sure you bring someone else with you who can hold your stuff because you obviously can't bring things down the slide. And as a bonus, they can also film you dropping, and I'm glad that I have this video. I would also recommend agreeing before you go on the slide if you're going to meet at the top or the bottom. We didn't do that, of course I didn't have my phone or anything, so I was a little bit lost for a while. I say lost, I just sat really on this promenade deck, so that was not too bad. Standing in the tube and waiting for the countdown was absolutely terrifying. The voice said three, two, one, and you can see on my face here just how nervous I am. The floor underneath me dropped back, which made me fall onto the back of the slide, and here is my real scream. From there, it was like a regular slide, but it definitely took me a few seconds to work out what was going on. This is actually me wiggling, although I realize now that I could have just filmed anybody in here and told you that it was me. I didn't have to do it, but I'm glad I did. Walking back into the ship so that I could go to the top of the slide, I walked in and passed the local. This is a bar venue that serves fantastic food. We went here quite a lot and it's open until late at night. To see more of this bar and to check out the rest of the restaurants, the public areas, the entertainment venues, and even some exclusive areas that you can't normally visit, check out this video on my channel next. There is so much more to Prima than just the scary things, as fun as they are. See you over there.